I think players are going to be so surprised when they get into the open world of Days Gone and they see how um, alive and uh, interactive all the systems in the game are. So the Freakers in Days Gone are living creatures. They have habits. They have migration patterns. They have territories. And like the Horde, for example, you can during the day you can go into the caves where they sleep. You can interact with them. You can throw a rock or, or make a noise and suddenly all these freakers will get up. They'll wake up. They'll come chase you. Uh, I recommend you don't do that because they will kill you. Um, but but follow them and watch what they do. They'll go out at night and they'll go to their feeding ground. Then they'll go to their watering hole. Then in the morning they go back into their into their cave to hibernate. <laughs> and the thing is, they uh, interact with everything else, not just you. But if a deer comes through, they'll chase that deer. They'll try to kill it. And it makes it a very, very unpredictable living world that you haven't experienced before. <laughs> Uh, it's both. So we allow the player, we have a, you know, because at Ben's Studio, we've always done um, strong, emotional, narrative driven experiences that are like part of a third person shooter. But we wanted to figure out how do we do that in an open world where you can be distracted, there are side activities to do. It's a large open world. And we figured out, okay, we want to be able to do both. How can we do that? And we created a feature called Storylines that allows you to, like you do in streaming media, where you download a whole series and you can watch episode, 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 and then jump to another series and then jump back, keeping track of where you are in a storyline. Um, and we incorporated that kind of idea into Days Gone. So you see an icon on the map and you see uh, a storyline that says like, I remember, which is where you're following Deacon in his sense of loss and grief that he feels with Sarah. Um, jump from that into a storyline where you're trying to keep your friend Boozer alive and you can go back and forth between these and at the same time be in the open world you know taking on hordes through a storyline called Horde Killer and you can always know where you're at um, on any of these storylines in the open world. Yeah, so the bike is probably one of the most important things in Days Gone, and it's because it's not just used for transportation, although it is used for transportation. It's the only bike you have. Vehicles are not disposable. Uh, if you want to survive in the open world, you have to have your bike with you because you're not going to be able to outrun um, some of these creatures. And so you're always worried about running out of gas. It's one of the things that makes Days Gone unique is that it's an action survival game where the bike uh, is a way of you know not just surviving, but also you know, forcing the player to think about the surroundings all the time. So if you run out of gas in the open world, that's bad. So you're always thinking about where you're going to fuel up, you go to a gas station or a petrol station. There could be marauders there waiting to ambush you. Um, so it's always dangerous um, whether you're trying to repair your bike or fuel it up. And the good news is, though, you can upgrade your bike so that you go to the encampments, you earn trust, you earn credits there, buy a bigger gas tank if you're tired of running out of gas, or upgrade one of the other 20 parts on your bike. And, and, they, and they can all be upgraded. They all help you survive. Um, other things that are really important to remember about the bike is, in the open world, it's where your quick save is. So if you want to save your progress, before you go in and fight a horde or before you take down an ambush camp, you want to be able to like use that quick save and park your bike in a place where if you have to get away, you can. And then later on in the game, you, the, the bike is super important for fighting the horde uh, because you have to have a lot of ammo. You have to upgrade your ammo, your saddlebags on your bike and to be able to bring that ammo with you into the, into the fight. So that's super important um, in the, at the end of the game. Yeah, it's a great question, and I think that for you know me as the writer and director, I think what what players are going to remember the most is the story. So again, I think players are going to be surprised when they come into an open world action survival game where you're fighting the horde, and suddenly you discover there's a story here, and it's about this guy named Deacon St. John and this feeling of loss that he suffers at the very beginning of the game. He has to make a very hard choice to either to go with his wife who's been badly injured or go with his best friend Boozer, and that moment sets in, in motion a story that will last 30 plus hours, a story that will um, you know, make you scared and you'll experience uh, fear and happiness and joy and, 
And I, you know, and I think that the best stories do that, and they create a memorable cast of characters that uh, that that take you on a journey that you that you won't have anywhere else. And I think that's what players are going to remember the most are these moments in the story where they are going to be surprised, and uh, and that's what they're going to remember about Days Gone.